cars today? GTA. <laughs> no! Brand- Get those words! All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a Tuesday edition of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on all the automotive enthusiast auction sites, including P Car Market. Look at that, I got a hat. Yep. Bring a trailer, cars swag. and bids, and rad for sale. That's right, we got the swag all over the place. We got some awesome swag this weekend. Um, check out this DWA rally um, blanket service, thing. Service yeah. blanket. That's not for cuddling. That is for laying on your back in zizzix so you don't get scorpions up your uh, jeans. You know what I mean? Lane did make it a point uh, to say, or was it Art that this? That, that you're right. This is not a spooning blanket. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you got to show people the the back side of that blanket is like a tarp, so that it's it's meant to go on the ground. Or you know, if you're really smart, you put it on a wet lawn and you can lay on the lawn without getting wet. But it is it is a car blanket, not a not a warm blanket. Yeah, it's very cool, very utilitarian. You know, Art said that, but then, like, what was it? Five minutes later, him and Lane were spooning on the on the floor of his E30. It was awkward, and they looked mm-hmm. very comfortable in that uh, blanket. Absolutely. So I don't know. Anytime don't, there's I, a camera I, around, I, you know how those two behave. So I beg to differ on the spooning <laughs> thing. I think that's exactly what it's for. Uh, <laughs> all right. So thanks again, DWA, for a great uh, Redwood and, and show P-car and rally. Market for, and Pecor Market for the swag kit. I mean, that was you know. Uh, Jim Barry, that was very sweet to send that out. Um, I assume my hat is in the box too. Um, with my little, they have like a P car market, um, F body decal. This looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah, there's a there were a few stickers in there. They sent a, a couple of t shirts, a couple of hats. Nice. So the next time you and I are in the That's same awesome. room, you'll get your swag as yep. well. So thanks, P car market. Look at that. The interns yeah. are finally on our side over there <laughs> for sure. They're not just busting our balls on the uh, on the comment section. Uh, no, this is a, this is a nice hat. I'm, I'll, I'll wear it with pride. Uh, and for the record, we don't work for P Car Market. We don't nope. work for BAT. We don't work for Rad for Sale. Uh, and we don't work for Cars and Bids. We don't work for any of the auction sites. None yeah. of them would have us because the, we are fools. We're buffoons. Yeah. This, this show doesn't even work. So there you go. I mean, there you, you know, go. Audience, yeah, exactly. audience of four, and two of them are dogs. So there you go. Mm hmm. Uh, one of them is coffee, even, coffee, 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 coffee. One of them is the producer of the show. Patootie, um, Patootie, she's there. Yeah, look, look she, at that. She heard you. She's like, she, what? She's so upset that you're back. She had the studio all to herself for a week, and she's like, oh, I thought that guy moved out. <laughs> she's like, I'm doing the show. We know that the show would get way more ratings if it were just her. Everybody wants to see. We always see questions oh for Patootie, but we don't ever get questions for us. So there you go. Hashtag pimp your pets. That's right. We need her. We need a little camera just for her. Um, all right. Well, let's get to the cars. What we do on the show is we, uh, you know, we dig through all the cars on all the automotive auction sites. You know, there are hundreds of them for sale. They're all closing today. So we kind of whittle it down to the most interesting ones. We nerd out about those cars. We talk about the details and we talk about the platforms that they're for sale on. And then where the rubber hits the road, proverbially, uh, we make predictions as to what we think these cars will actually sell for when the hammer hits the sound block at the end of the respective auctions. Each one of these cars, we will make a prediction as what we think they'll sell for. Don't listen to us. We don't know what we're talking about. We always start the show by proving that. Uh, we go ahead and we show the cars from the previous day. We tell you our bids and we show you how wrong we are. So... Play along with us. Let us know what your bids are. Hit the subscribe, like, and notification button now if you haven't already uh, so you can always be part of the freshest nerds available. Let's go ahead and get to yesterday's cars, Deep, because there were some yeah. kind of interesting results yesterday. yesterday there were some odd. results. We were a little off on a few <laughs> of them, but what's really funny, JP, is we started off the week. The first three lots to close were your wins, and and I thought I was going to get whited out again yesterday. Uh, and then later in the afternoon, two other lots closed, and I won those two. So it wound up with a little bit of parody. But right out of the gate, I thought I thought I was off to a terrible start. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I just came off a good week. Like, really, you know, thanks, 
Google Sheets. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's start with the, what did we start with? The C4S? 2003, yeah, the C4S. Of All course, right. we always talk about C4Ss. This we love Porsche, the C4S, bro. This, this Porsche 2003 C4S had the techno wheels a uh, little bit higher mileage and the all gray interior. Um, and I think we kind of guessed correctly that uh, with the miles and with this sort of polarizing sort of sand dollar interior, that the result on this one wouldn't be a bank breaker like so many C4Ss from the 996 generation have recently been producing. And that this one might be attainable to more of a lay person. Somebody on a teacher's salary could still afford this car. So I went ahead and said thirty-six thousand dollars coming in, well under forty grand, where we've seen a lot of these cars uh, sell for above that. Uh, and then you came in underneath me at thirty-five grand, and you were smart, JP. This car sold for just thirty-two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. And I would say that even though we were off by a couple of bucks, that that's not a surprising result given what we reviewed yesterday. I think that's fair money for the car, and and. Look, if this car were on BAT, might it have brought a dollar or two more? Yeah, but not like uh, you know, not, not like twenty percent more. So I think PCAR did a great job with this one. What, what do you think, JP? Could, yeah, I don't. Are, know are anyone, we off on that? Yeah, I, mean, I don't think on. anyone could have gotten more money for this car. The interior was really a pit, and that really yeah. held this car back. I think the miles were people would live with that. Seventy something. They had the miles. right yeah. maintenance and stuff like that. The exterior color was beautiful. I like those color, the wheels. But the interior yeah. really, really hurt this car. At some point, you have to sit in this thing and you know be inside the car, um, yeah. and you can almost smell it. Looking at how bad it looked. Um, <laughs> the good news is you could swap out the steering wheel and the seats and the and the floor mats and have a much better space to be living in. But you still got to deal with that got that gray dash, and that would be difficult. The gray dash do. is the, yeah. the gray dash is the killer. It, it's <clears throat> not even the seats. It's what's in front of your eyes and yeah. what's on your shoulders on the doors. That's where uh, we're lost, and that's why we like. Like, you know, some of these Porsche and a lot of BMW Mercedes interiors uh, will give you tan carpets and tan seats, but the black dash and the black tops of the doors. And I think that's the winning combination for a lighter interior. And we don't see that on a lot of these uh, Porsches from yesteryear. So I think that's a job well done. The basalt black paint was really cool. And the little C4 or the 4S logo, uh, little nod to creativity. That was kind of cute. Did you um, like that? I, you know, yeah, I, I mentioned I it yesterday. Like, I actually kind of like that idea. I think yeah, people, I we're going to start seeing that more often. Yeah, I, that was cool. I, I like the way he did it. Um, all right, JP, let's take a look at an Alpha. A BAT had a 1989 Alfa Romeo Spider Quadrifoglio. Uh, the Quadrifoglio is really just a body kit for this car and then this prescribed interior. So we're looking at a black Alpha with low miles. I think, JP, it was 43 or 48,000 miles. But the Quadrifoglio has this real cool front air dam, the rocker panels and the rear wing spoiler, the 15-inch wheels, and gray leather interior with red stitching plus bright red as uh, a red carpet with um, Porsche would call this matador red if it were a Porsche um, and that's the only way the interiors on these queues came uh, we've seen some spiders uh, get into the forty thousand dollar range and in some cases higher than that uh, the, the later the next generation with low miles are bringing collector money so uh, I thought this car had every chance to reach 20 grand I thought 21,000 would take this one home you went even higher and jumped up to 25,000 bucks. And it's there that the result starts to look silly because this car stalled out after we reviewed it, only made it up to $15,000 and sold for that price, which means mm. the consigner was ready to take almost nothing for his car. I, I just, it's unfathomable to me that you had a sub 50,000 mile Spider Q uh, and that your reserve was set below $15,000. So this result is surprising to me jp uh, and do you agree with that sentiment yeah. or do you say yeah I mean, a it's a nice surprise. car yeah yeah man i would like to have owned that car for 15 grand i mean that's uh right? that's all the spider for that i mean what because you're not really getting any more performance out of any different version of it so no uh why not get a cue i the interior color combination is not my favorite but it's certainly not as bad as that 996 where it's all gray at least yeah. just the carpets are red everything else you know the dashboard is black and everything like that yeah, yeah. yeah i'd be happy to sit in there and uh, black enjoy a summer, summer day would Black floor mats would mute that uh, carpet uh, quite a bit, and that make it a lot more uh, livable. All right, John, we looked at another weird car, uh, the 2001 Saab 9.3 Vig and Cab. Um, and here's this weird, uh, you know, 
it's hard to explain this, but you know, when Saab was in charge, you and I agreed that they made some pretty exciting cars with some interesting technical innovations that made for a unique driving experience. Later in the sort of 900s evolution, when General Motors invested or took over Saab and their influence and engineers that are run by the bean counters at GM took over, Despite this car having um, really interesting equipment on paper, this did not make for a superior driving experience or a more exciting car. Uh, you had big horsepower, you had cool uh, front air dam and taller wheels, uh, but this was not the same Saab that you and I sort of fell in love with when you start talking about the the 9000 turbos and those earlier cars from the 80s. So uh, this 2001 9.3 had 100,000 miles on it. It was a convertible. Um, it's a fast car. It was sort of the, the, the peak experience for Saab, at least on paper, before this model died out. And we, we wondered where it would go. So I was a little more optimistic. I thought this car might make it to 7,500. Um, you were heavy handed in your criticism of the car because of the GM involvement. And that was all fair play. You said $5,900. Our car sold for 7,000 and I wound up being a little bit closer on that one. So I got that, that bid, uh, or I got that lot, if that makes any sense. Uh, and then we had a couple of Porsches at the end and you kind of kicked my ass here. So the 1985 944 that was extremely clean and had very reasonable miles. I said 14, you said 16. The car sold for $15,150, meaning you beat me by $150. Uh, JP, we were all over this car. Um, that is still, you and I both argue, even though we were close on guessing where, uh, predicting where it would sell for, you and I are both correct in saying that at $15,150, that is a steal. I don't think you can get a more exciting, more head turning, better handling car. For under 20 grand than a 944 and this is arguably the cleanest base 944 we've covered on the show uh so i would say that this one deserves some sort of bid nerd star of approval uh congratulations to the seller i think you just ripped a great car that you can enjoy for another pff, i mean lane's had his car for a decade right All right think of it this way that c4s that sold at kind of a low value uh the for thirty two thousand dollars. imagine for the same money you could have bought this 944 and that Alpha Spider and had both yeah. of them in your park in your garage. Yeah, for less money. For yeah. less money. Which would you rather have? One 996C4S or these two spectacular cars? Uh, I'll take the latter all day long. These, more these two spectacular cars and $2,600 in the bank. <laughs> right? You got, you got uh, it's crazy. gas money to go to Monterey. Hell, you could even have a little leftover to yeah. go to the Quail if you could buy some that would, tickets. That would pay for your hotel, right? And mm. gas. Yeah, you're right. Um, so that's a, that's a great take, JP. Uh, and I don't know. Yeah, that's that's a good one. All right. And then we looked at this 1988 Porsche 911 cab. This is a G50 cab in blue diamond metallic, uh, which is funny because it's a colorway that you and I are both. I mean, we've obviously we've probably seen this color before, but we've never been faced with the paint code and the name of the color. Um, and neither one of us were particularly familiar with it. So I encourage the nerd herd. If you're familiar with blue diamond metallic, please let us know in the comments that you you know this car. Tell us what year and model you've seen it on, because uh, JP and I were both stumped by this one. Neither one of us were familiar with it. Um, true, true story. So I look, I, I thought despite having maybe some high miles, this car looked to be in really nice condition and had some tasteful modifications. Even if I don't love the 17 inch Fuchs wheels, uh, they, somebody spent the money on them and, and I imagine somebody would like them. So I said $57,000. You liked the car, but we're a bit more pragmatic and said 55. Our car sold for just $50,000. So did that guy rip that car? I mean, what do you think, John? That's a really rare color. I don't know. The market was down yesterday. I mean, look, crypto was down. The stock market was down. Was everything down, or was yeah. it, or was this just another Bezos? Another... Bezos was up. He he flew to space in a very phallic rocket. Did you yeah, he took the, uh, the, you, the 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 star dildo. dildo yeah, star uh, took <laughs> off into space. Um, yeah. I look. I, I don't. Hilarious. I don't think. I don't think the market's down on the cars. All of a sudden, I think it's no. just. Um, you know, the cabrio phobes strike again. Cabrios just don't bring the money that the coupes do. If this car were a coupe, it could have brought darn near a hundred grand. I mean, it's it's amazing right. that the that the drop top will bring literally half the money. It's an interesting car collection that the this fella or lady has. Saw that, There's a right? Viper in the background, a C8, and a Mark II 997. And yeah. honestly. 
of of all four cars, which one do you get rid of? It ain't the 911 G body. No. Uh, no. It, it, get that Viper out of there, or that or that Corvette. Give me a break, dude. You yeah, you don't deserve <laughs> this car. I'm glad you didn't get a whole lot of money for it because you know, God forbid you oh. get enough money to go buy <laughs> another stupid American car. What are you gonna do? Get a Mustang now? Uh, yeah. This is that's just a that that yeah no just uh, you should have kept this car and got rid of one of the american cars despite the miles jp i think 50 grand for that unusual a car uh was well yeah, I bought. Think it was I, i'd say i'd say yeah. it's really well bought i think that yeah great i absolutely i would de- endeavor to put that car mostly back to stock and i think it'd be a really neat uh car i think it's pretty head turning so jp that's the we started off the week you got three wins to my two um do you have a second john um i know you have a busy day but uh on our sheets, do you have our sheets up? Uh, there was a car I wanted to talk about yesterday morning that I forgot about, and the link is above yesterday's selection of cars on our dock. Do you see mm-hmm. that for the, uh, uh, the E1 Cayenne? Yeah. yeah, can you pull that up for a quick second? Sure. I just want to talk about this result. So over the weekend, um, I think it was Bring a Trailer closed a 2008 E1 platform cayenne gts with a manual transmission. Uh, the interesting thing about this car was that it was particularly low miles. Um, uh, so let me click it myself because I actually don't have it up. 34,000 miles on this E1 white Cayenne GTS. Now, um, it's been a while since we've looked at a manual Cayenne. And, John, you've sold two base Cayennes, uh, actually, and then uh, online. And then you owned a GTS with a manual that you loved. And I was shocked you sold it because the car was black, your favorite color on an automobile and a Porsche in particular. But I don't know that you and I have covered one arguably as nice as this. This one looks to be in, you know, really like, you know, CPO, brand new condition. It looks to be spectacular. It's white, which is a little unusual. And of course, the stick with the V8 is a great combination. We've seen the market come up this summer, and it's been a few months since we've covered one. So, John, just at a glance, what do you think a car like this is worth without just peeking ahead at the results? on this particular car i'm trying to get to the interior what uh, is it a black oh wow black interior uh, yeah, with white black interior. interior wow yeah a red brake calipers i mean it's got it's it's really the way you'd want one it's pretty does neat. it have pddc or is it just uh, i don't think so no that's a yeah. really rare option on these cars um i know you had one that oh you well, have my turbo one, right? had my turbo yeah, has turbo it but has my it. Yeah. uh but my cayenne gts did not have it yeah low miles yeah. like this I, boy, that's a good question. I mean, every single one of them we've seen come up for sale has had, at the very least, like a low mileage one would be like 60,000 miles. Um, mm-hmm. So to see one with 35,000 yeah, miles. It's like half that, yeah. Oh my gosh, it's crazy because like three years ago, you'd have struggled to get 20 grand for this thing. Eh, maybe four, yeah, about three years ago. Um, but now, holy free holies, I don't know. I mean, with the. Yeah, I, we've I'm, seen. I, We've seen the sub 100,000 mile ones get into the 40,000 mile range if they look to be in decent condition. You and $40,000 range. $40,000 range. Yeah. yeah. And you have been cautionary. Say, hey, look, uh, despite this being an inexpensive car and a lot of fun to drive, just just know that these cars are out of warranty and that some of the maintenance can be breathtaking. You definitely mm-hmm. want to find one and you want to know the history of the car to make sure it's been looked after because you want to get a good one so you're not faced with um, you know a lot of surprises. This car looks to be spectacular condition. So if if a nice one will bring 40 and the market is up and this is really low miles, where do you think the ceiling is this car? Man, I you know I'm just going to throw a shot in the dark especially since you're setting me up like this. I'm going to say 60. Yeah, and I, you know, yeah, 60 grand. Yeah, 60 so yes, uh, over the weekend on Bring a Trailer, this car sold for sixty five thousand five hundred dollars, um, and I, I mean, you know, good God, I mean, was this like a hundred thousand dollar car and an eighty thousand dollar car when it was brand new? There's the window sticker. I'm gonna open it up while you tell me what you think of that result. Uh, you know, it doesn't surprise me. And what are you gonna what are you gonna compare this to that you can get now? There's nothing you can buy. Go yeah. buy a brand new Cayenne. You can keep it. I have zero interest in a new Cayenne. None. Zippo. Yeah. Uh, I think it's yeah. just ridiculously overpriced. I like them. They're nice, but you're an idiot for spending that much money on, a, on an SUV. Yeah. Something like this, you know, if you have to have an SUV, uh, an E1 Cayenne is one of the best things you could possibly own. They're so yeah. much fun and way, they, they're just Super way over engineered. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. These things are just, they just, they're ready for Dakar. And like you like to say, uh, the new ones are <laughs> yeah. ready for the mall. Um, this, yeah. Totally. Yeah. I, I Wow. Um, I'm really it, jealous of what, the owner of this car, but I don't know if I'd have paid 65 grand for one. But then again, yeah, you, why not? You've owned, 
Yeah, you've owned a couple of them, and uh, and and it's that first generation of the car. You can tell that Porsche turned the engineers loose on this vehicle, and they said, "Look, we want a car that'll do it all," and this really will. Um, JP, thirteen years ago when this was brand new, this was an eighty thousand dollar car, and so now thirteen years later, with thirty four thousand miles, this car brought sixty five thousand dollars. I mean, that is. That's an incredible reflection of the market for this unusual model. And again, this is only because this one has a stick. If this were an automatic, uh, I, you know, I, it might be in the 40s, but I don't think it would bring 50 grand. Would you yeah, agree with that bring, sentiment? I don't even think it would be close to 40s. I think you'd be lucky to be yeah. in the high 20s, maybe low 30s for a low mile yeah. E1 GTS. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I saw that result and I couldn't wait to share it with you, John. I thought that no. was pretty interesting. Um, and then I think we'll have another... Uh, I think you and I will get a chance to look at an E2 Cayenne manual later this week. So cool. uh, anyway, onward and upward. That's the weekend. Uh, there you go. We're all caught up. All right. Well, let's get to uh, the cars of the day. We got it. We do have to move it along because uh, we do have other stuff going on. We may not have a show tomorrow. Uh, we're, if we do, it's going to be an abbreviated show. So um, check in tomorrow. Make sure you have that notification button uh, clicked so you know if there's a fresh bid nerds coming up. Uh, so let's get to today's cars. What do we got today? Holy cow. All right. What a bunch of weirdos. Let's start with the C4S again. I mean, we are C. Oh, it's okay. the, it's the right. bid nerd C4S. Is- show <laughs> all right i thought we were gonna start with that 550 spider because all right fine let's do the 550 spider fine the, 550 spider the, jp uh since meeting you i have come to grow and appreciate just appreciate just <laughs> that's it i appreciate the replica cars of which you know the speedster is arguably the the highest one i think you said type a's are made more often than anything else we rarely see b's or c's that are just convertibles or roadsters it's mostly speedsters but every once in a while you see something like um, a 550 spider or a 718 spider um and we looked at a 718 not that long ago that i thought was actually really cool but this guy out of fort lauderdale florida built a vintage motor cars out of california 550 spider and this is the real deal john this is fiberglass body on a tubular chassis with what i think you and i are going to coin as our favorite motor for these cars the 2300 cc volkswagen flat four with a four-speed manual to boot this guy painted it silver did a light tan interior and did the carrera panamera panamerica uh livery on the car this is the telefunken radio uh, version that won the race i think in like 19 i don't know 55 or 54 or something uh and i think the livery on this car and the period correct details with the banjo steering wheel and the video green face gauges john this guy can have my money all day long i would hmm. much rather have this car than a stack of cash i would make payments on this thing i love it so much i think this is the coolest one we've ever seen the real one of this car john is probably a five million dollar car so the thought that you could buy a replica of this car that arguably is more reliable and drives better because it's got a 2300 cc volkswagen 4 for less than 100 grand is ridiculous guys are building replicas of gto's that cost out two and three million dollars for the replicas because they're using you know, correct Ferrari 250 chassis and real Ferrari V12s. Um, it's bonkers that you can get a car that's almost as iconic as a GTO for, you know, what is peanuts? I mean, this is like pennies on the dollar. You can get a $5 million car for $65,000, which is probably going to be my bid. I think this is amazing and would be a really fun driving experience, not to mention the crazy amount of attention you can get. Imagine, JP, you and I, like a couple of sausages, sunk into this thing <laughs> driving around monterey for a week taking pictures and screaming bid nerds at everybody i think you th- there's no way to have more fun behind the wheel for a uh, uh, even greater amount of money even twice the money i think this is a ridiculous value absolutely head turning the livery is faithful um i'm all over this one this is the nicest one i've seen and i am absolutely head over heels in love so jp tell us why this is a superior one when it's um fiberglass over tube chassis rather than an old Carmen Ghia or a Beetle. Why is this better? Well, I mean, whenever you have a chassis that's built specifically for the car, I mean, you look, a Volkswagen Beetle is just not known as a particularly good handling car. This car right. uh, is basically a little race car. Um, we yeah. lost the video feed there. Uh, 
this one is very true to you're right i mean it's got a lot of details i love pointing out that the the front grill on these a lot of the cheaper ones uh they have those vertical slats and that piece is a separate piece um you know on a real one it's a separate piece Uh, the the a lot of fake ones they just kind of like have a little you know dimple in the fiberglass mold (laughs) that kind of looks like a little uh access port um there's some really cool details on the engine that 2365 engine uh with the dual carbs and the big fan shroud and everything like that it's kind of a bummer that the fan faces the wrong way so you can't see the 13 blade you know fan that looks like a 911 fan um the other thing that's really cool about the engine is the valve covers say porsche on it uh instead of you know instead of having you know so this one really is getting into it um, you know, it's it, it it's not a brand new build. It's got some spidering to the uh, to fiberglass. some of the fiberglass bodywork, uh, but who cares? I mean, this it just has that vintage look. Um, it has Bilstein suspension. I mean, I imagine this one actually yeah. handles really well. Uh, you're absolutely right. Two dudes like us are going to look kind of ridiculous in this thing. Um, our good friend Mikey P from God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Um, he recently tested it. We went out and looked at one of these locally here in Las Vegas. And, you know, everybody that knows Mikey knows that he's not a big guy, right? You and I are kind of, yeah. you know, we've got to, we take up too much space. Uh, Mikey does a little not, more tall. right? Uh, yeah. he, Mikey kind of looks like his proportions are correct, but he just looks like kind of a smaller person. Um, and he's, he's built for speed. He is. And when he sits in this car, it, the car looks normal size. When you or I sit in this car, we stick out above the, head, the windshield and we just look like yeah. it's kind of like, uh, you know, somebody stuffed a yeah. water balloon into a shoe. Uh, you know, whereas Mikey just sits there. He's the perfect uh, perfect size for this car. He looks so awesome in this. I hope he gets one. It is his favorite car. Um, this one's probably going to command quite a bit of money. Um, and uh, yeah, what do you, where do you think it's going to land? So JP, I put sixty five grand, and I just every every minute I spend looking at this car, I just think that that's not enough. That I, mm. you know, like if if one of these was going to bring eighty five thousand dollars, it's going to be this one right here. The Bill Sting, the Porsche valve covers, the bigger motor, the livery, um, the period details like the gauges and the steering wheel, all of that. Uh, gets my vote for being the nicest one in existence, and so I, I, I did put sixty-five grand, but I'm I'm afraid that if I stick by that, you're going to come in at like a hundred and tell me I'm nuts, and I don't want to look silly. So do you think I should raise my bid? Because if I will, I'll put a lot more money on it. Oh, look at this guy! He's asking me to do your bid now. Come on, we're bid nerds. Yeah. Not, not. Yeah. No, I'm not going to yeah. do your job for you. How much is going to? What's right. it worth? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm just gonna add ten grand to my bid, and again, it's because wow. I would pay that for this car. I'm gonna say seventy five thousand bucks. Let me ask you, as I as I as I stand behind seventy five grand, JP, if I called uh, Vintage Motor Cars of California today and wanted to buy this all these pieces at, before assembling it, what would it cost me to buy this kit and have it built? Like if I yeah. wanted Rafi to do it, would, I mean, yeah, would it be at well, least seventy five grand? Oh, to have someone else build it for you? Yeah. I mean, because, like, I think, I don't know if they come with powertrains. I mean, different manufacturers do it differently. Um, I think you get uh, the cha- you get the body and the chassis, maybe the suspension, okay. but then you decide what engine you want to put in it. And you tell them, right. I know that's the way Beck does it, right? So with okay. those guys, you say, here's what I want. And you tell them what engine you're going to put in it. A lot of people are putting yeah. in, like, Subi swaps and stuff uh, and water right. pumper right. engines, which I think is just terrible. Um, Hoovy's Garage did that. So, you know, you get the car, yeah. then you get a crate engine, and you have someone you know put it together, and they they basically have it ready to have the ready to have the engine and powertrain swapped in. Uh, but it does make a difference. You can't just like it's important to to note which car or which engine you're going to put in it, which powertrain, because they have to have it ready for plumbing. If it's going to be a water pumper, they got to make room for a radiator in the front, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, it's my number. Uh, I'm taking your bid. I'm taking 65. Um, I 65. think it's, right. I think it's going to land somewhere in between you and me on this one. Um, okay. The right. market is up. I think the prices for these have for a nice one like this has been in the sixties. Um, and, uh, but, uh, things are a little weird. So it'll be interesting to see where this one goes. Um, I am excited to, to see this one, make a bunch of money. I don't have a 550. I have a 356 B convertible replica but this motor with this powertrain yeah yeah yeah, and yeah, I think yeah, yeah. The, the better powertrain really makes a difference on what these will sell for a lot of times you see them with a little 1600 or 1776 and you know this I, is, it's just not enough poop 
I agree, right? Because when if your car were faithful, right, the the biggest motor it, it should have uh, it based on originality, <laughs> yeah. sixteen hundred cc. Yeah. So I mean, you're talking, <clears throat> you're talking three quarters of a liter bigger motor. I mean, that is going to kick some, you know, farfig nugan. So yeah. there you go. All right, cool. All right, let's all right, move JP. On. Look, Let's go to that C4S that we were talking about. It's a 2003 C4S, uh, almost like yesterday, with 73,000 miles. This one's in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Six-speed manual. IMS was done uh, by the previous owners. Um, the car is on, I believe it's on P-Car Market, right? Let's take a look. Yeah, P-Car Market. Uh, anyway, nice car. White, which is, I still think white is kind of rare on 996s. So this one, to me, is very yeah. eye-catching. Um it's got the 18 inch wheels and this is, you know, this is the real deal. There's a couple of little tiny mods, you know, they did like some silicone hoses and some H and R lowering springs to give it a stance. But the big thing here is that the LN engineering IMS uh, bearing solution was done by the previous owner. And this car is available with, you know, uh, I think a fair amount of miles. It's not a hundred thousand miles. It's not beat to hell. And it's not a low mile beauty cream that, you know, somebody only drove on Sundays, you know, in the nice time of the year. Uh, this car's got a few miles on it, but it looks to have held up really well. well. How many miles does uh, it have on it? Yeah, I mean, that, what's, what's 73,000. OK, all right. So that's a big miles. difference between 73 and 100. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. huge. Right? Yeah, for sure. All yeah. Right. And so I think this is a I think this is a really nice car. Um, anyway, no nonsense. P car market. Um, photos are fair. There you go. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, this car is the almost identical to yesterday's black one, uh, except right. that it has a different colorway. I mean, in, in, and uh, it does, I, you know, the, the ride height, it looks great with the H&R Springs. Um, is that all it is, H&R Springs? It's not, uh, yep. it's not uh, coilovers or anything like that? Yep. Okay, So yeah. here's the thing. Yesterday's car was uh, also on P-Car Market. So that's interesting. Yeah, P-Car Market, and it brought $32,750. And then today, our car is sitting at, also on P-Car Market, also on the East Coast, our car sitting at $30,000 already. So very interesting. I think this car is going to do a little better than yesterday's car. And is it the wheels? Is it the interior? Is it the rare white color? What do you think? It's definitely the interior. What's your bid? All right. I'm going to go with uh, $36,000. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go high and say this one gets really close to forty. I'm gonna say thirty nine. Uh, this right. color is epic. Uh, white on black is. is almost unheard of. It's crazy that the exact same car. This is how much a difference the interior color makes. You see a lot of times cars like this listed on forums and classified ads and and people are like oh i saw would go for fifty five thousand dollars is just like mine but you know there's ha is some terrible blue with all tan interior you know as far as you can see um yeah they're just not going to command the same money it's it beauty is uh more than skin deep here uh the color makes a huge difference especially when it comes to the interior you have to sit there and look at it the 996 interior is uh, some people love it, some people hate it, but it's polarizing in any way you look at it. Even if you don't like the general design, black covers up a lot of the things that people don't like. So, um, yeah, I think this car is going to be way, way more strong than the black one yeah. yesterday. I, and I agree with you. Uh, JP, yeah. I had done that Breakfast Club rally, and the last, the whole last hour of the rally, I was behind a white C4S, and he had like a really? rack system on his roof. Mm -hmm. And I, I called you from the car, and I said, I have fallen in love with this car because you know I was really staring at you know the rear end of a C4S that has no wing on it, and it's got those slats under the the rear wheel wells yeah, and the, the gills, white yeah. color. And I was like, I was like, this is the best looking car on the road. It is absolutely stunning. And somehow white really enhances the lines on the car. It was beautiful. So yeah. um, JP, I hope you win this one. This car should bring 40 grand. So yep. let's jump over and la have a laugh. Uh, Doug DeMiro got, way to go, Doug. A 1987 Renault <laughs> Alliance GTA, which I think stands for Grand Theft Atrocity. Um, JP, little history lesson, and I, I honestly, I had to look this up myself. Um, Renault invested in AMC. God knows why, but they purchased into American Motors Corporation, and uh, they had a platform that they started building. It was called the Nine, and they start they changed the Nine to the Alliance of the United States, and they were mostly building two door and four door sedans. But in a factory in Kenosha, Wisconsin, 
at the end of this run, they wanted to make a car specifically for the U.S. market. And so they took this platform and built a convertible called the GTA. And uh, it was launched in 87. And I think it only ran for the one year. Built 1,029 of these things. Um, and what sets them off is this Zender body kit that came standard on the GTAs. So those rockers and the front air dam were built by Zender. Do you remember Zender from the 80s and 90s when you and I were in high school? I own rockers, man. Hell yeah, I know Zender. Come on. Isn't that hilarious? It's got this little Zender body kit, and they were it's a manual transmission, but this car has got no guts. A two-liter inline four that makes 95 horsepower and 114 pound-foot of torque. It's front-wheel drive. So despite having a five-speed manual and a Zender body kit, there is nothing going on here. Our car has 200,000 miles and for the age looks to be in spectacular condition. But these cars were worthless when they were new. They were worthless when they were young. And I would argue that outside of Radwood, uh, I don't know that anybody would walk across the street to look at this car. That being said, I wish this car were for sale a couple of weeks ago when Matt Weitzel was looking for something to rock at, at Radwood. Could you imagine Matt Whitesell, who has the same body type as me, getting out of this car at Radwood? I think he would own the show if he showed up in this thing. Um, it's just pure comedy to laugh at it today. Uh, I don't know where you would get parts for this thing. I don't know that there's any value in it. Uh, JP, with two hours to go, our car is sitting at $2,100 on 11 bids, and it's worth noting that's exactly where it was last night. It hasn't gotten in any action this morning. This car could be DOA. But – from a Radwood perspective, I thought this thing was hilarious. So, so JP, do you share my amusement in the Renault Alliance GTA? Yeah, what a hunk of crap. This car <laughs> is not going anywhere, especially on uh, Doug DeMera's site. The, the person that wants yeah. this car is not there. There might be someone that wants this, ironically, uh, over on uh -huh. BAT. Um, this, I mean, or, these are just... Rad for sale. Well, yeah, Rad for sale would be the right place. Um Oh gosh, I, I remember looking at these when they, you know, when when they were fairly new used ones on the market and comparing them to like a, a Cabrio, a Volkswagen, you know, Cabriolet. And uh -huh. you know, it has about similar power, but God, I, I remember driving one just going, Oh my god, what a horrible car. Yes. Um yeah. and even with the top down, you may not have fun in this thing. It's just it's just junk. Um so it, God help whoever really gets this car. And, and that's a great comparison, right? So an 80s Volkswagen Cabriolet with that roll bar and a manual transmission is a way more fun car to drive. You would literally have fun going in way too hot into a corner, throwing the Rabbit Cabriolet into a turn, and possibly lifting your inside rear wheel and never feeling like you're out of control. And, I, and that's a true story. Whereas in this car, if you went in too hot, you turn the front wheel, that car would just plow right into a pole and you'd be dead. I mean, like it's they're, they're not on the same page from an engineering standpoint. So that's a mega comparison. So even as we all used to make fun of Cabriolets as being girls' car, uh, it's a way better driving vehicle than this pile of shit. You know Shizzle. What uh, what, what's your bid? Shizzle. 2500 bucks. I do think it's going to get one or two more bids before it closes, but it's not going anywhere. So from 2100 bucks, I think there's another $400 in the pot before this goes. It's a no-reserve auction that I forgot to mention. The car is in Atlanta, Georgia. You would be wise to ship it, tow it, or whatever, or, or you must live in Georgia. You do not want to drive this car across the straight line and depend on it for transportation to get you home. So 2500 bucks gets it done, JP. Tell me I'm wrong. Look at this guy driving one-handed with his right hand. I, I assume uh, he's filming yeah. with his left hand or something. Um, yeah. Don't do this, guys. Look, mount your camera somewhere. Don't try to drive, especially in traffic, in film at the same time. Um, this guy doesn't deserve a dime just because of this video is so bad. D <laughs> dude, what are you doing? You're just This is just dangerous. Um, in a car that that steering wheel might just pop off the steering column too. So you, you're going to need all your wits about you when this car fails in a spectacular way. Uh, you you know shouldn't what? be you know uh, having one hand devoted to a camera. Look, if JP, I, I would say this is a bid nerd's take. This is a hot take that, that the crowd, the nerd here is going to learn to uh, enjoy. That if you own a Renault Alliance and you need to videotape it for Doug DeMiro's site, you need to hire Yuri Sanakis, male car model, <laughs> and have him have him pay him to drive your car. And I think I think this car would get ten grand if Yuri was behind the wheel. That's my take. All right, so your bid was what, 25 
twenty five hundred bucks. All right, I'll go twenty nine. I'll say someone Whoa. just someone wants to blow this thing up. Oh like, my uh, god! It, the, the only thing that this seller has done right is go no reserve. So someone will be like, a hey, $3,000 junker that I can go and oh beat, my God. you know, take it down. This thing would be awesome to safari down a dirt road and drive it until literally the wheels <laughs> fall off and just leave it wherever you left, wherever it dies. Uh, that's a Rami take, right? He, Rami yeah. would buy this car and shoot it in the desert with like a, you know, grenade launcher or something. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. What All else right. we got? Couple more cars, JP. Uh, let's do the uh, 2005 Porsche Carrera S out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. Our car has just 28,000 miles. It's black on black, but here's what's going on. It's got adaptive sports seats. It's got the Lobster Fork 19s. It's got a six-speed manual. The IMS uh, will be done by the consigner at the completion of auction as a gift to the winning bidder. So in other words, he'll pay to have the IMS done before it goes on a truck. But check it out, JP. In 2005, the first year of this car, somebody ordered this one with PCBs. They spent $8,000 on ceramic brakes, making this a very unusual build and clearly a car that was built specifically for a buyer. This was not a dealer stock inventory. There's no way a sales manager anywhere in this country ordered a, a standard Porsche S with PCCBs. I would say that this car is bespoke for a particular person. So I love the combination of the ceramic brakes, the manual transmission, and the adoptive sports seat. The fact that it's black on black on lobsters makes it even better, and you'll get a fresh IMS, and you're under 30 grand. Now, we have seen 997 start to soar into really unusual territory, particularly the dot twos. But I suggest that this, this dot five, I'm sorry, this dot one, being a 2005, the first year, even though it's just a dot one, I think this car is going to break the bank. I think it's going to go for over $60,000. JP, what do you think of this car and the value in this like crazy market right now? Yeah, I mean, it really is one of the greatest cars of all time uh, from a just general sport, like all around sports cars. This is the one to get. You do have to worry about those things that we always talk about, dang, bore scoring and IMS, but they're taking yeah. care of the IMS, so that's great. Low miles always scares me on an early 997. Um, even right. if you get the IMS done, I just don't feel like it's enough to make you breathe easy with these early ones. Um, right. That said, uh, I... In, in the minority, uh, a lot of people that buy these cars still to this day don't really know anything about the IMS and bore scoring stuff. So they yep. just look at car buyers, always look at miles. There's low miles means yep. it must be better. Um, and yep. that's what's going to affect the value of this car. I, I believe you're right. What's your bid? Uh, JP, I think I still think that somebody's going to go crazy for this car. It's uh, Let's remind everybody that it's on P-Car Market, so there's a good audience looking at it. Um, with three hours to go, it's already up to $55,000 on just two bids. Um, but mm. I still think there's some future for this car. I think at the end, somebody's going to come out of the woodwork and want that car with the ceramics and the stick and the seats and pay $65,000 for it. That's my bid. Sixty-five. dollars it's the second time I've bid that, I think. Whew. Yeah, anyway. that's, a, that's a tough one to bid against because I, I think you're right. Um, is it going to be slightly over or slightly under? I'm going to go slightly under and go 62.50. Uh, I think right. it's going to be right there just over 60. Uh, how far over 60? I don't know if it's going to quite go into 65 territory. Uh, that's pretty bonkers for a dot one. But, hey, we have been seeing bonkers lately. So. All right. Speaking of bonkers, JP, we saved the very best for last. Uh, <laughs> fresh on the heels of the DWA Sierra Rewind Rally, we have just spent a week amongst the DWA and Radwood crowd. And John, the, my biggest takeaway is not how many guys are out there that are rocking cool Porsches, both old ones and newer ones, but that there was a small contingency of very aggressive Swedes. There were three or four Volvos on the rally that were set up. And so what I present to you is this 1984 Volvo 240 DL with a four-speed manual out of Grant's Pass, Oregon, with just 202,000 miles on the car. This is a DWA rally uh, race car just waiting to be set up by its next custodian. This is a new reserve auction. And the big thing here is you've got a really clean, very straight looking four door with a manual transmission. 
And uh, like like I was saying, two or three of the guys were on the rallies. Uh, I think there was one guy that had a black one that was a coupe like this. And there was another guy that had a wagon with the Nordica livery that sounded like it had an LS swap. I remember him passing me at about 120 miles an hour, and it sounded like a NASCAR went by. Uh, this car is really cool. The platform that you're working with, the, the Volvos from this era, are just built like a bank vault so if you are gonna you know massage that motor and strap on a suspension you will find a car that's shockingly responsive because the platform from which you're working with is so sturdy that being said the geometry on these is not very aggressive i don't think they're ever going to turn in like a, a true sports car uh but it's an interesting car that we see occasionally modded and on the dwa rally there were a handful of them and those guys were hilarious so really cool to see somebody take this car and keep it going from an enthusiast standpoint uh i think you could do a lot worse than this one this one just i don't know jp but the panel gaps on this it just looks like this car's never been hit or whacked or rusted or anything um it even has white wall tires which crack me up tell me why you like this car so much or am i wrong in thinking that this could be really fun i'm excited to see some nerd out there go grab this car and make something really special out of it what do you think um, there were more Volvos on the Sierra Rewind Rally than there were 993s. Um, That's but true. Yeah. this car, do not mod this thing. Do not buy this thing and make it into some kind of rally car. Don't take this car on the DWA Rally. Um, as much as I say that you should always drive your cars, I agree that this car should be driven, but not like that. That's not what this this is for. This car is so clean. You never see 240s this clean. Um, it's just a joy to see the cloth interior in that condition, this really blue paint. I don't know what color that is. Um, these Ooh, do drive really well. But they they are they are a drive around kind of cruising car. This would be such a fantastic daily driver. Um, this would don't beat the living daylights out of it. This car will <laughs> go for four hundred thousand miles or more without having yeah. to rebuild the engine. Um, it is they they just have a great road presence and yeah they they handle far better than a box of uh, you know wood and matches or whatever that you that they look like. Uh, but yeah, don't don't mod this. Don't slam it. Don't put wheels on it. Don't try to make it a E30. That's not what this is. This car is for looking classy and driving around and going to the grocery store or, or going on a road trip out to the coast. JP, this needs the louvered rear window cover. Wouldn't that look cool? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, sure. I mean, if if it's period correct, heck yeah. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Yeah. This one. What year is this? Is it 93 or something or 91? It 84 Volvo oh, it's an 84. 240 okay because i'm looking in at that scotia blue scotia blue is the name of that color jp it looked like the steering wheel was one of the airbag steering wheels they made these until 93 and some oh, of the yeah. later ones actually did have airbags it's funny that that older steering wheel looks so big that you would think it had an airbag but it does not um yeah great Force, great great reliable car this should be preserved with overdrive yeah, and it should be presented. And it looks like it has been. And I think the fact that it's on BAT, it's going to be. I think whoever buys this car is going to take really good care of it and drive it. I just thought it was hilarious, and it was a huge shout-out to that contingency of really aggressive Volvo drivers on the rally. You guys were hilarious. It was really fun to see those cars out there, uh, even if like, it was like, whoa. You know, they were I'm, I'm frankly shocked that someone from Grants Pass, Oregon is letting this car leave Grants Pass, Oregon. This is the right. kind of car that belongs there. I mean, look at this beautiful house that it's parked in the oh, lawn. No. I oh, mean, no. this, this car should come with that house if the person ever sells it. Just yeah. find a way to keep this thing. You're, you're not going to get any, I mean, you're going to get some money for it, but enough to make it worth JP, selling? I don't get it. Wrap your brain around this uh, really quickly. Last night, the car was at 5200 on just nine bids. Uh, it's a no reserve auction, so this guy wants this car out of his garage and off his property. Uh, last night, I put seventy five hundred dollars down, and today, as we're looking at the car, it's got an hour and twenty minutes to go, and it's already above my bid at seventy nine hundred bucks. So it shows you how little we know. Sometimes it's just really funny. I thought seventy five hundred dollars would be a great number for this car. Um, this car looks like it's even with two hundred thousand miles. It's so clean. And so faithfully original, this car is staring ten thousand dollars in the face. So I'm going to send it back to you at ten grand and say that it gets there. Do you think it's going to bring more than that? Twelve thousand. 
Maybe more. Oh, my God. That's because somebody on the DWA rally is going to pay for it. All right. So there you go. 12 grand. And that's a sh- JP. Get out of the uh, studio. Get that it's button. true, guys. Yeah, we are done. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit the subscribe, like, and oh. notification button. And we'll probably see you no! tomorrow. Oh. Get the dirt!